Hey guys, this is this is John, and welcome to another uh, climbing the rating ladder video. Sorry, I botched that. <laughs> that was not the smoothest intro, but um, we're playing music is just wiggly air, eighteen oh four, and we get another Scandi, folks. Let's see what happens. I'll take on d five. Last time we got knight f six. Interesting, and we're gonna get the same variation. Maybe this time instead of the whole d four thing, I can actually try one of these bishop b five check type systems where the goal is to attempt to hang on to the pawn. Okay, my opponent plays c6, though. c6, this is aggressive. Let's take the pawn. Yeah, so I don't think black should have enough for the sacrifice pawn here. Just checking my recording. Everything looks good. All right, let's play knight f3. Probably going to look to play d4 and take over the center. My opponent pins me with bishop g4. Now, if I want, I could take on c6 and try to wreck the structure. I'm also thinking about throwing in h3. I think that might be wise right here, just to try to get black to declare their intentions with this bishop. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, the way that black is playing this variation looks a little coffeehouse to me. So in other words, I don't quite think black should have enough here um, for the pawn, and it looks maybe more something you would do in a blitz bullet game. So this is only 10 minute, no increment. So of course we have to keep that in mind, but I'm pretty happy at this stage. Let's play d4. I'm going to use the pins in my favor. And maybe white, uh, black rather, will try to play a6 and get my bishop to do something. I'm thinking about playing the bishop back here anyways. That might be a good option if I want to conclusively break the pin. Because if take take, there's always issues for black like on b7 if they play knight takes d4. I could also try to take on c6 and then just deal with the pin, wreck their, their queenside structure. That would be fine. Yeah, so interesting that I get two knight f6 Scandinavians, this modern variation, in a row in this series. Climbing the rating ladder. Queen a5 check. Yeah, knight c3, of course. Defend the bishop. Now, maybe black is playing this because they realize I um, am unable to play c3 now to defend the pawn on d4. But I do get to accelerate my development, so I'm not at all unhappy about that circumstance. Okay, and more aggressive play by black. They castle. Now I'm definitely thinking about taking on c6 and wrecking those pawns. This is a threat at this point. Could also think about g4. g4 and um, maybe taking on c6 thereafter or bishop e3. Just trying to assess how much after taking on c6... I have to worry about moves like e5 and c5. Black's kind of nuking their king position, but I want to make sure I can, can properly punish this. And I'm ready to respond correctly to a move like this. Yeah, so I'm probably going to take on c6 here. Let's go ahead and do it because I'm not coming up with a better move. And... From this point, now in a situation like this, I'm not that opposed to losing this pawn if it means completing my development and black has a weak king and weak pawns in the, uh, in the end. So just putting that out there, that's not a terrible outcome for me. Could think about something like queen e2 here to escape the file situation. Kind of like the look of that queen e2 because let's say bishop takes... Queen takes, I'll be on this pawn. If rook takes d4, I believe I'll have g4. And black has issues keeping this together. So this might be a good move. Just steps out of the pin. Seems like a nice coordination move too. So yeah, let's play it. Possibly eyeing up a6. You know, in the case black does something like queen b4 in some situation. Or queen f5, black swings the queen over. And I probably have a variety of moves against attempts like that. Yeah, I think you can perhaps expect to see this from time to time if you're playing e4 and you get into this modern variation. There are some players who like to play c6 and gambit the pawn. I am a little surprised at this rating level that black did that because it, it is pretty speculative. I think bishop d7 or knight bd7 are just the way to go there. But still a game. I, I'm not automatically winning here by any means. So we're just trying to consolidate, keep a safe king, 
probably castling kingside, but I could see some situations where I do go uh, long. Okay, e6. So we got black to play this move. Yeah, now if I castle, rook takes d4 might be a more viable option because then g4, possibly bishop takes g4, opening my king. All right, rook takes g4 coming up. So I may want to play g4 myself here. That actually seems like a pretty good idea. g4, bishop to g6, and then maybe knight e5. Hit c6, hit g6. That looks pretty nice. Mm, yeah, I'm kind of envisioning some situations where black could maybe win a pawn back there. Let's say g4, bishop g6, knight e5, queen b6. Uh, knight takes g6, h takes g6, and then if bishop e3, there's queen takes b2, and that would actually be an issue on these two points. I do have queen a6 check there, but then queen b7, getting a little little ways out. It might be good simply to play g4, bishop g6, and then castle short. I can do that. Yeah, that, that might be the way to go. I, I'm pretty annoyed by this pin at this point. It's not like imminently necessary to break it, but I do like doing this. So I'm going to play it and then probably castle short on the next move. Keep knight e5 in reserve until I've conclusively solved my king issue. Yeah, I don't think taking on g4 would have made sense there for black. That's usually not a sack that's going to fly, although it is common. Yeah, I would go here right away, but there's this queen b6 move I'm not quite sure how to solve. Maybe castle at that point. But in the interest of just playing the necessary move, let's go ahead and castle right away. Let's front load the move that I'm almost certainly going to want to play. Again, could try to engineer castling queenside, but it's so much tougher to do. Just because I played h3 and g4 doesn't mean I'm 100% not going to castle this way. Because consider where the queen is. It's on the other side of the board. Consider that if black plays a pawn break like h5, I can go g5. I have resources to defend here. And... I feel pretty confident about the kingside situation for the moment. So, yeah, black does play h5. That's a natural move. Probably going to play g5, like I said. Knight e5, also tempting because it does threaten here. So I should consider that one. How would black react to that? That's, that's actually an important question. The only move I'd be kind of worried about after this is h takes g4. Because then I see if I play knight takes c6, black might be able to swing over. It looks pretty speculative to give the rook like that, but I don't really want to have to entertain that option. I mean, maybe I could just take back. Yeah, I'm going to go g5. I'm behind on the clock here, so let's just keep this as simple as possible. Now, I do lose some control over f5, but let's see where this knight goes. And very likely, I'm going to play knight e5 anyways next, so that would block the queen from getting over here. All right. So I think black probably should play knight d5. Knight d7 looks a little too passive, although it does control e5. So on knight d5, certainly knight e5 still looks good. Take, take, queen takes. I have probably queen a6 at that point. Yeah, that should be very strong because then we converge on the c6 square. So important decision for black. Knight d7 might be the better move. It's not a move you're thrilled to play, but it might be better. But the thing is, maybe I just play bishop f4 at that point, because then if queen f5, I'm actually mating with queen a6. That's checkmate on the board. Sort of a Bowden's mate style idea, even though it's with queen and bishop instead of two bishops. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. A little hard to generalize against a gambit like we saw in this game. You know, I am trying to keep a compact position, but you can see, you know, stuff like h3, g4, and castling this way. You have to do that selectively. I can't, you know, say as blanket advice that that's always going to be a good idea. Yeah, 95, I like the look of here. I'm going to do it. Puts pressure on the bishop, pawn. Can safely pre-move this capture as well. I am going to take. 
Yeah, black can't survive a double capture on c3, so queen a6 is just killer in that instance. Nice attacking this bishop on g6. This is not um, a good arrangement for black with the bishop on g6 having moved the h-pawn and getting attacked by the knight on e5. I can tell you, having played lots of Scandies in my career, that typically does not work out well for black. All right, king b7. Yeah, I think that's sensible. I can win a pawn here. I can take and then take e6 if I want to try to cash in. So let's keep that in mind. Looks pretty clean, I'd say. Yeah, even some attacking chances there. Hard for black's queen to get close to my king. So as a default, that's what I'm leaning towards right now. Now I'm trying to think, like, if I were playing black in that position, how I would garner counterplay, but I'm not really seeing it. Kind of hard for them to coordinate, too. Like, probably bishop d6 or something, but they might be having to give up another pawn on g6. Yeah, the only issue is my king's a little bit open, but I'm liking this. Yeah, let, let's go for it. Three and a half minutes left. No increment. Yeah, go after the pawn. Really nice that the bishop is controlling here, so we don't have to worry about that. Queen takes g5. I don't really know what black should do here, to be honest. Like, bishop d6, the more I look at that, I can throw on knight takes d5. If I want to even forego queen takes g6 and just trade a little bit. Knight e4 might be a good move, too. Yeah, black does play it. Okay, so... Because I have options here, kind of like my using the clock as a weapon videos, these are the types of situations I tend to fumble the ball a little bit and try to analyze more than is needed. So I'm going to try to hold myself accountable here and try to decide fairly quickly which of these candidate moves I want to play. There's also a check here, but I'm not quite feeling that one. I think what black is doing is the right approach, by the way, because the position's really, really bad. They got to try to make something happen. Yeah, I think I'm going to take on g6. We'll go for that. I'm still happy if black takes here because I, I get that open b file to attack with. Just monitoring my king, but it seems hard for them to get at my king. They need some different arrangement than they currently have, like a battery with the queen coming towards h2, not the bishop so much peering towards h2. Yeah, because like here, at minimum, I can go check, and here, bishop e3 as a default, probably a good move in this position too. Keep all my options open. Maybe I have a direct win with check here, king a8, and then queen takes g7, simply threatening mate. Yeah, Black would have to play rook b8 there, but I can play uh, bishop e3 if I want to coordinate. But bishop e3 right away is also nice. Yeah, let's not, let's not tarry in this position. I'll just play that in the interest of playing the necessary move that coordinates my position. Black's queen takes h3, keeps everything defended. We're going to prioritize that one. Keep threats. Keep black guessing as to which way I'm going to play next. So I think if you take one general thing away from this video, it's that. If a move keeps coming up in your calculations as one that you're naturally thinking about playing, especially if you're trying to consolidate, I would say go ahead and play that move right away. Because your chess instincts are probably telling you something. All right, Rook comes over. Yeah, so rook b3. So now this gives black the option of blocking. I think they're trying to set this up, by the way. So I'm going to elect to just give the check. Expecting king a8. Yep. Could take here. Rook e7 then. Not sure I even want that pawn. I might want the option of taking this one. Let's throw this move in. Yep, I think that looks good. Possible doubling options if I want. Maybe I'll just swipe this pawn too. But I like the fact that this helps overprotect. Yeah, I may take this pawn next. 
kind of get my queen back on a potentially good circuit here. I mean, realistically, black can't do much here. Queen c4 or queen a5 are the only moves that make any sense. If queen c4, queen takes h5, I did see that there's bishop h2, but I can go king g2 and keep my rook safe. Black actually goes queen a5. I'm a little surprised by that. So this pawn is kind of weak. You know, Bishop f4 catches my eye if I want to try to trade, but I also simply like taking. Might go ahead and do that. Maybe they'll go queen d5 at that point. Yeah, let's take. Again, queen takes g7, would have threatened mate, rook e7. Kind of dealer's choice here. I'm up... Um, three pawns at this point. So queen trade would be awesome. Any sort of simplification would be greatly in my favor. Let's threaten checkmate. Remember, this is defended. Probably black has to play rook c8 here. Do I care about this pawn? Probably not. Not losing sleep over that pawn. Maybe double the rooks next. Goes back to c7, yeah. Not predicting my opponent's moves very well, but that's okay. Now I'm thinking I might go rook b7 in some situations, trade two rooks for the queen. Just helps me coordinate, again, playing those necessary moves. Let's go queen back. Everything nice and tight here, even h2 guarded at this point. Rook c3 is a nice avenue for attack if I want to attack the pawn on c6 that way. Biggest obstacle at this point is time. I'm envisioning, let's say, rook c3, rook c8 in some situation, d5, c5. I might have um, like a bishop take c5 move. Okay, goes queen d7. That attacks h3. I think this is probably good. Yeah, let's go here. Because if here, I can take on c5. And then bishop takes c5. I'm crashing through with d6. Really nice. Also, when I move this bishop, it helps control h3. So looking for a breakthrough idea. They take, okay. Well, probably trading queens here. Yeah. Trade, take. King looks safe. I can always bail out with the king too if needed. Like say black doubles, I can start coming this way towards the center. Could play that. There's rook b7 too. But I think I'm just going to start. Mm, yeah, let's start getting the king over this way. 25 seconds. Just prioritize that. Build a little slack into the system. Can't go rook a3, by the way. Threatening mate, the bishop guards. Mm -hmm. Threatening rook takes c3 in some cases. Let's go here. Very snug position. And this is my next move. More than likely. Let's do it. Bishop b8, c7. Should decide. Yeah, and this is checkmate. Can't play king takes a7 legally. One of those funny situations where even though my bishop is pinned, that is still an illegal move for black. So let's tell my opponent GG. Yeah, so the time got low. I think the position was always winning, though. I'm pretty happy with how I handled this. And we'll see if the computer disagrees in any major way. But I think from the moment I decided to play g4 95, it was always looking pretty good. Knight d7, perhaps a bit more tenacious. But 
I think overall this this gambit is unsound for black. So hence why we'll see when we look at the opening book, black prefers bishop d7 or knight bd7 here and a slower process of trying to win that pawn back. So why is this gambit not the greatest for black? I would say black doesn't have the pawn action and the development to justify the, the pawn sacrifice. So it's not like they've established a pawn on e5 in the center before I have. Yeah, they have a slight lead in development, but it's nothing major. I'm closer to castling, actually, whereas black is not. So you could say black even has some issues with their king. Because if they go long like they did in the game, you know, it's kind of open over here. It's kind of, uh, to use the word in my opponent's position, it's kind of an airy uh, position for the king. So... It would be a little different if black had already established like a pawn on e5 or something and they were making a gambit like this. But when you don't have control of the center with pawns, and in fact, like I'm the one taking the, the center, black's kind of relying on piece play here, maybe vaguely some pawn play later, which I sort of anticipated with queen e2. I just don't see the compensation. So I would say for my opponent, they played pretty reasonably in the middle game. Um, maybe could have tried for some... Uh, different compensation, but the position was honestly tough. I think this is just an opening they got to rethink, especially against higher rated opposition. So I'd recommend looking into bishop d7 or knight bd7. Let's click in, click into the game review. Okay, so I got an 88% accuracy, pretty smooth graph here. 71.7 for my opponent. So I did mention in the last video in which I faced the modern... Scandinavian with knight f6 that I don't like trying to hold on to this pawn, especially with c4. Sometimes you can you can think about playing that if black is really foregoing the option of capturing this pawn. But d4 is a good move here. Knight f3, I won't repeat my discussion from that game uh, that I posted last time in this opening. Do go check that out if you constantly face this or are curious about how to play against this. But yeah, bishop b5 check is interesting. I'd be curious if any of you guys out there play this. And let's take a look at the opening book here. So, only three moves played in this position. You're not seeing anyone go queen d7 or knight fd7. <laughs> so bishop d7, actually by far the most popular move. Yeah, and I do know that bishop c4, this is the principled way to handle this, where white drops the bishop back and claims, says to black, like, I'm willing to have given you this move for free because it hinders your ability to win this pawn back because your bishop's in the way of the queen. And had black on bishop g4, I probably would have played this f3 move. Let's see, bishop f5, knight c3, and tried to make it kind of challenging for black to win the pawn back. Just interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, I guess black can gradually try to do that in some way. Take, take, knight g3. Yeah, so we're getting into some lesser played territory at this point, but if black does win the... The pawn back, it'll take several moves. Interesting. So you could explore that from the black side if you like. Yeah, g4, even a more aggressive attempt here by white. And then bishop c8, black often goes back. I'm guessing because the bishop experiences some problems over here. If not, yeah, or the knight even getting attacked. Yeah, okay. So some potential pawn action for white trying to push around. The black pieces and make it difficult for black to win the pawn on d5 back prevent black from smoothly doing that but black plays c6 yeah the computer also marks this as a bit dubious let's turn on the engine here we got to take that pawn definitely the only way to seriously challenge the opponent they take with the knight i've had this position a few times i don't think anyone's played b take c6 even though the engine has that up there too this kind of seems like a variation of the fried liver, but again, one in which black has far less compensation. That variation of the fried liver I'm talking about, there's a knight on g5 that often gets kicked around, and black can make many developing moves in the process of attacking that. Not so really here. I mean, e5 or something. Yeah, black has a little more of the center, but white has no weaknesses to speak of, smooth development. It's just hard to believe that black has compensation. From here so knight f3 i'm not taking yet could think about it but i like just bringing the knight into the game keeping my options open 
and thinking about D4, maybe C4 in some cases. D4 castles, though, mainly the direction I'd think about here. All right, so yeah, black could take and then play rook C8 if they want to try to avoid pawn, pawn structure damage. But no issues here. Yeah, it's looking like this might be about the best black can get, but just not inspiring for the pawn. So bishop h5, d4. Okay, the engine does like other moves here. Still an edge after d4. Doesn't... Mm, yeah, I'm not sure I should pay much attention to that. It's, it's really close. Quarter pawn, three-tenths of a pawn. I could see how maybe castles is a little more flexible because it just prevents this queen a5 thing. If I want to keep my c pawn flexible, then maybe castling first is better because, yeah, here I do have to play knight c3. Okay, castles. Yeah, it's also suggesting e6. I would have been okay with that. e6, castles, bishop c, bishop b4. Yeah, no problem here. What if I take? Queen d3 or something. Yeah, some activity for black with the bishops. Still doesn't quite feel like compensation, though. But maybe a better option. Okay, so castles, and now I do take... And I played this queen e2 move. Engine giving many options here. Queen d3 as well. Huh, that would not have occurred to me because I thought I was trying to get off the d-file, not stay on the d-file. I think the idea with queen d3, though, is to unpin right here. So I can think about knight e5 next. That seems to be what the engine is saying. And again, if black takes here... It's important I can take with the queen, because rook takes d4 is meant by queen takes c6. So we saw a similar motif in the last modern Scandinavian video. But okay, queen e2, I'm pretty happy with this move too. That seems pretty natural to me. Again, if rook takes d4, trying to use the pin, I have g4 here. Attack. And if I were castled, this could be meant by bishop takes g4. But here, that's not going to cut it. I'm not scared of this. Black doesn't have enough compensation. Can probably prepare to castle queenside. Note that e4 is guarded too, so no rook e4. Although I guess they could play rook e4 here, use the pin, but then I play bishop e3. Okay, even getting three pawns, potentially, for that sacrifice piece, uh, probably not enough. Oh, that's not even three. That's actually two, because they didn't take this one to begin with. So, just coming up short. Okay, so e6, I went g4. Another move here, rook b1, wow. Can't say I considered that. <laughs> I suppose the idea is to go b4 in some cases. Interesting, even though there's a bishop sitting here. Yeah, I was pretty happy with g4, kick the bishop back, and then castle. Like I said, we can't, we can't paint with such a broad brush that we say we're never going to castle after having played h3 and g4. It's a situational thing. Like, yeah, a lot of times your king is going to be too open. But given the way that the game went down, with black committing their queen over here, it having no conceivable way to swing over with any real effect, and black having a more open king than mine, most importantly, I feel pretty comfortable here. I don't think this is too bad for my king at all. Okay, so h5, g5, and let's see if knight d7 is better. First impressions from the engine does indicate this might be a little bit better. It does control e5. And I think I mentioned bishop f4 here. Slicing through the black position. Because if queen f5, trying to attack a couple things, well, this is that Bowden-style mate. Checkmate on the spot with all these squares controlled. If this were a bishop, a bishop that'd be a true Bowden's mate. Um, often that's preceded by a queen sacrifice. So yeah, bishop f4, this looks pretty good. Black would probably have to come here. Sort of like the game. Ah, uh, yeah, and then it indicates knight h4. I like that move. Kind of like the game. It puts pressure on the bishop. And it also controls this f5 square. Bishop h7, a3. Mm-hmm. Maybe trying to come here. This looks nice. Black's still struggling here. But they have pieces on the board. It's still a fight. So instead, knight d5. Yep, I jump in the center. Black went king b7. That seemed to make sense. It's indicating that this could also be tried, but I think at minimum I can still go for this, right? 
Yeah, if, if black has to go queen d7, swap queens down two pawns, that doesn't seem promising. So remember, black's already down one pawn. And if we get to do this, we're up two, maybe even three. I'm not afraid of knight takes c3. I would welcome this move because b takes c3. I get a new avenue for attack. And again, queen able to come to a6 in the case of this is just a crusher. This king is not going to survive. Yeah, this is not a tenable line for black. <laughs> Lots of fun moves here. Bishop d2, develop, defend the rook. Because if takes, there's knight c4. And I would lose if it was king of the hill, but it's not king of the hill. <laughs> so kind of combining attack and defense here, playing some defensive moves like g5, I definitely do not want black to take and open this h file, but still looking for attacking opportunities and sort of using the um, momentum I have being up a pawn. In many cases, like even if black were able to win this pawn smoothly, I would welcome that because of the, the open nature of the black king again. Like I have that luxury of giving back a pawn and saying, hey, like I just think even if we play equal material, your king might be weaker than mine. Yep, king b7. And here I'm trying to manage my clock. I am behind on time as usual. So you know, I even mentioned coming up that I didn't want to go into the weeds too much when I have promising options. This is a hard thing to do in the course of a game where you know you're better or winning is, as the famous saying goes, the hardest thing to do is in chess is win a one position, deciding between good options, and you can only play one. So I think my candidates mo candidate moves here were knight takes d5, queen takes g6, and knight e4. Yeah, two of those moves feature in the top three. Again, this b4 move is featured. That's funny because if queen takes, there's rook b1. I think taking on g6 looks good. I didn't see any issues with that. We have this ready-made attack down the file. So black does win one pawn back. Yeah, and here I played bishop e3, and I was talking about how this was the necessary move. Okay, the engine in this case does say that this is stronger. I mentioned this line because it threatens mate. And unlike the game, black can't interfere with the rook easily. So I was thinking they'd probably go here. Yeah, maybe in hindsight, this would have been a better way to play it. Even something like this. Um, I was thinking it might be nice to keep the queen defending this, the pawn on c2. Computer points out a nice line as well. Take, take, queen d7 with a double attack. Precise resource. But yeah, uh, actually, this, this is defended, so that's not a threat yet. But I do believe the computer that this is crushing. Probably difficult to find a good square for this bishop. But bishop e3 looks like a nice coordinating move. I don't have too many issues with that. That said, I mean, it does slice the advantage in half, more or less. It's plus 3.6, and I go down to, you know, plus 1.5 or so. So it probably is somewhat of a mistake, purely. But it seemed to make the position pretty easy for me to play. I want black to go rook d7 here, defending this. Kind of a coordinating defensive move. Yeah, I probably would have done what I did in the game against that check. Rook b3, try to double, start attacking down the b-file. So, all right, rook h8, I gave the check. Yeah, again, could take here, threaten mate. Just didn't want to lose momentum in the case of something like rook e7. Didn't even want to have to look at something like this. Yeah, this only fails for black because of rook b3. It's kind of a tough move to have to calculate with... A minute or two on your clock. Otherwise, if I take, black gets some nice play towards my king. I'm pretty weak on the dark squares here, so apparently this is equal. But yeah, rook b3, nice coordinating move. I really thought black should go queen c4 here to at least eye up this rook. Kind of keep tabs on some of these points as well. I think I mentioned queen takes h5 here. Is there any issue with that? No. This is still better, apparently. And bishop h2 is an idea we have to have on our radar, but I can always play king g2 if I want to defend this rook. That's the point of bishop h2, by the way, is to try to deflect the king. And I guess in this case, I have queen b7, so I could, in fact, do this because of the imminent mate threat coming. But black played queen a5. 
I snatched the pawn on h5. Again, not technically the best move. There are better moves the computer's suggesting, but this is still keeping me um, in a very healthy, better slash winning position. Came back, threatened on c6. Yep, double. I felt okay about my king at this point. Fiend kettoing the queen, so to speak. Yeah, and I, I was pretty happy about this move. D5 breaking through. I've got all my pieces pointed towards that black king. So the idea here, which I think black saw, is if c5, I can take. I can play bishop takes c5, because if takes, there's d6. Black is getting mated. Queen to c6 or b7. Allows a checkmate. So that's a clearance sacrifice. Also nice that this rook is participating laterally, too. So it's another pawn. Black would be unable to take, and we're up, what, uh, three pawns, four pawns at this point? Yeah, four pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, six versus two. So black ultimately took on h3. And even though black's rooks are close to my king, black doesn't have the necessary pieces to create problems. I'd say mainly because black doesn't have good play on the, dark, on the light squares here. You know, if this bishop were sitting on d5, this would be a completely different story. But I can put my king pretty safely on light squares. I maybe even overdid it in the defense. I probably don't have to play king f1 here. Yeah, computer's suggesting king g2, actually. Trying to escape up this way if black checks. Rook b7, the direct rook b7 looks good. I just didn't want to have to look at this stuff and check, but pretty, pretty easy to see that I do escape in hindsight here. Probably the best black can do is like check, trade rooks, and then go after the c pawn in the end. I was thinking if that happens, play rook b7 in the final analysis here and go after the a7 pawn and also c7, uh, g7 rather. Should be winning. But rook f8, it's still not too late to blunder. If I go here, that allows rook takes e3 with the pin, and I don't have my attacker on this square. So that would not be good. King e2, 22 seconds on my clock. Again, can't recommend the John School of Time Management when you're trying to narrate your games, but <laughs> here we are. And rook h2, rook b7, this is decisive. Threatening the mate. If bishop b8, I can play c7. And yeah, this is indicating a checkmate. This is a nice defensive situation, by the way. Bishop on e3 with a pawn on f2. King kind of snug there. No black pieces that can harass my king. No light square bishop. No knight. Very safe king position here. So, yeah, if bishop f4 is the best move, then that's, that's an easy win for white. Just trade down. Even open this up. No problem at all. Let's say something like this. Probably can directly go c7 here and threaten this. Even, even trading down, let's say I were to do this right away. Totally unnecessary, but just to illustrate... This is a completely winning endgame. Two versus one here, extra C pawn. With, you know, 15 seconds on my clock or something, I might have gone for something like that if it occurred. Okay, so I think a pretty clean conversion. Yes, the engine's showing better moves, but at no point did Black have, I would say, serious counterplay here. So maybe some strategies if you deal with this C6 type gambit early on. You do see that a fairly a fair amount of the time in Blitz and Bullet in particular online. I would recommend to my opponent to look into Bishop D7 or Knight BD7. We didn't really look at Knight BD7, but there the idea is A6, and in some cases B5 to chase the bishop and eventually get this knight here. And yeah, just that overall theme of prioritizing the necessary moves like castles, if you think you're going to have to play them you know, later, the Bishop E3 move. Even though it's not the best move, I still feel pretty good about that. Under the circumstances, I think Black's still really hard up for a defense here. And that just fit the bill. It, it prevented queen takes h3. It defended my rook. I still keep c2 defended. And I still preserve threats. All right. Thanks to music is just wiggly air. Great username for the game. Hope they see this. Please do give us your comments if you like music. If you do happen to see this. And let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, or feedback. All right. Thanks, guys.